In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, we want to model the Sierpinski pyramid uh, by using the Launchbox plugin. I want to teach you how you can use a simple component to make this uh, in Rhino Grasshopper. Uh, at the end, we're going to also uh, make a render in Keyshot, so be sure to watch the video till the end. We're going to speak a little bit about the backgrounds and some materials we can give this to, to the pyramid to produce the final result. So the first step uh, I want to explain is how we can make this in Grasshopper from scratch by using the Launchbox plugin. Uh, so let's get started. First of all, I want to put the Bifocus plugin to, so you can see the commands. And uh, I'm going to go to the curve section. And in the primitive, you can find a polygon. The reason I'm going to do this step is that in Rhino, uh, you can go to the a solids and select something called a pyramid and make that in Rhino. For example, we can just go here, select the pyramid, and number of sides can be three. Just put that down. And then we can just make this base and then extrude that up, okay, to produce that pyramid. Uh, but in Grasshopper, we don't have this pyramid component. So we have to be sure to make that from scratch. So that's the uh, reason we're going to go to the primitive and select this polygon from scratch. Okay, uh, let's give this a number of segments. You can see by default it's six. I'm going to just double click uh, two forward slashes and type three. That's going to give you a panel. So we're going to put that three to the segment and produce this one. Okay. Uh, the plane is the center of the, the XY plane is the default input. Uh, we can just give this a point and set this to a point. By giving it a point, we can actually, it's going to convert that point into an XY plane. So uh, that's not going to be a problem. Then we can give it a radius. I'm going to give a number bigger than 10 because that's going to give us a number slider between 0 and 100, which has more control. Okay. Uh, that's for the radius. Okay. The next part is to uh, extrude that in the Z direction to make the pyramid. Uh, we can first of all connect a surface to the polygon to make it into a surface and then go to the surface, freeform, and select that extrude point. That will extrude our surface to a point. That is the base surface. Now we need a point. Obviously, we can move this point in the Z direction, so I'm going to say MV move and move that point in the Z direction. And if you give that number to the Z direction, it's going to help you to uh, produce a complete pyramid, okay? That's exactly what we need. But if you want to give it a different height, you can give it another number slider and also control the height. Okay, so maybe you want to change it. That's also possible. Uh, the next part is to use this pyramid to uh, produce that Sierpinski pyramid, right? Uh, in the Launchbox plugin, remember to install the Launchbox plugin, you have to put it in the file special folder component folder, uh, or you can use the installer to install it and then uh, uh, restart your Rhino Grasshopper. Okay. Uh, what we want to do here is to go to the generate and use this subdivide triangle, okay? First of all, you can see that the input here is a closed triangular curve. So we can't connect that to this one, right? We have to take an extra step and convert this solid into the curves for the borders. Uh, we can do that by going to go to the surface and deconstructing the BREP or the boundary. And the next step is by the faces, is actually the faces of the pyramid, we can go to the params and connect a curve to the faces. And by this technique, you can extract, let me just bake this, you can extract the borders. That's how you can do that, okay? And now you can give that to the triangular curve. That's how we can reach the first step. You can see it's dividing. The number of subdivision here is important. So I'm going to give this from 0 to maybe 4. 
and show you how it's going to change. For the zero, you can see it's the base pyramid. By going to one, it's going to divide each of these uh, faces, and by increasing that, it's going to go up. Okay? So, then, uh, the most important part is how can we get the Sierpinski output from the subdivide triangle? It's really easy. You can see that this input here is Boolean 1, 2, 3, 4, which you can give it a true false. I'm going to use a toggle, T O G, Boolean toggle. You can say that this is like a switches, right? I'm just going to name that switch. It's not really important, I just want to say that. Let's put that to true. Control C, Control V, four of these, bring it down, select all of them, put it into the align, and then distribute that like this, and give that to Boolean 1, Boolean 2, 3, and 4. Okay? If you put the first one into false, you can see that this is bringing you, let's just go to the front, and uh, you can see that this is producing the Sierpinski subdivision. That's exactly what we want, right? So remember that the first one, if it's false, it's going to give you something like that, that to two. Uh, if you just turn everything on, uh, put the last one to false, you can see it's going to put at the corners. And uh, you can play with this if you put all of them to false. You can see that you can reach the base of that. Okay, not really important. Uh, what we want to do is to uh, put them all to true and the first one to false. Okay, that's exactly what we need. You can see that's going to give you two sets of cells. Uh, if we connect the surface to that, it's going to be like this. The first series, let's go to the front, you can see it here. And if I give it to the cell B, it's going to be like this. So it's two sets of curves, right? And what we want to do here is to work with a little bit of giving that a frame. Uh, I'm going to give you a trick you can use for all of these cells. I'm going to give that with a shift key to the surface. All of them is going to be converted into the surface. And because this is like a triangular surface, it can be converted into a mesh, right? That's really easy. We have to go to the mesh and utility. We can give a simple mesh because it's a simple mesh. That's how we can give the meshes an output and convert that into a mesh. You can use the Launchbox plugin. Let me just emphasize that you can go to the Generate and select this Panel Frame tool to give this a frame. Turn this off. And give it a number between 0 and 1 to produce a series of frames and windows. But what I want to do is to convert that into a mesh because it's really faster and you can see it's a little bit slower with the paneling frame. So uh, you can also use that technique but when you give it a mesh, convert it into a mesh, you can use the Weaverbird plugin. So we have going to use the Weaverbird and use this picture frame and window, these two tools. Give that to the mesh. Also the window, give that to the mesh, and you can see that's easily converting that to, it's really fast. Uh, what I usually do is to put the insert type into a parallelogram, I give it a number between uh, 0 and maybe 2 or 3 is fine, so I'm going to put that 2.5 and give it to the distance, both of them, and you can see that we can give a thickness to that. Okay. Uh, there's a trick here that we have to fix. Uh, if, we, if we give that a little bit of a material, just go to display and use this custom preview. And maybe give that one to the windows and give it a watch, SWAT, and maybe and blue is fine. Okay? The reason I want to explain here is that you can see that the thickness here is a little bit different than this one. And the reason uh, this can be uh, fixed is that the center of this is going to be thickened like that, right? So what we can do is to just put that part in uh, a smaller thickness. So just let me show you a trick you can use. 
instead of the base surface, which is going to be this one, we can just copy this, control C, control V, and bring that to the next cells. But this time, if we want to use the distance, we can go here and type x divided by 2 and x divided by 2. And you can see that this is going to give you a, a better results for the thickness. That's going to give you better results. And the thickness is really uh, something similar to the borders. Okay, That technique can help you to have better results. Uh, that's how you can produce the Sierpinski pyramid. Now let's go to the next part, which we want to uh, bring that into a key shot. So I'm going to go to the parts menu and put that into a mesh. So those we want to do the frame, I'm going to give a shift with the shift key. I'm going to uh, hit the shift key and add all of those frames into one mesh. And control C, control V. This time give the windows to another web mesh with a shift key. And let's just bake that. Okay, bake this one into layer one. And bake that one into layer two. And we're good to go. Let's go to the next step, which we want to move that into Keyshot. So you can just right click on the layer one and select the objects uh, file and hit the export selected. Now in the pyramid folder, I'm going to go to the outputs. I usually scroll down and use this SDL. SDL is really great for uh, working with key shots, so I'm going to get, uh, give that to one SDL, save this, uh, again say OK, and select the layer 2, select object, again with the right click you can go as export as, and put that to 2 SDL. For the options, you can see it's like binary, export over an object, it's not really anything special, just hit OK. And now what we want to do is to bring that into Keyshot and give it some material. Just a little quick tutorial. So I'm going to just run Keyshot and open. It's an old one, but I want to give you some of the basics we can work with. OK, uh, what I usually do is just in this tutorial, I'm going to go to the environment. And in the lighting environment, I use I usually use a backplate image, so I'm going to click on the backplate image. And I usually use a simple gradient of gray for the background, so you can use an image uh, for the background. You can also use the color if you want to maybe just put that into red. Okay, so based on your project, you can uh, pick uh, and hit OK and select a color for the background. So remember, you can Hit color or use a backplate image to put your projects inside that. Okay, let's go to the scene. I have to go to the file and select import. And you can see that we can import the STLs. If you can't see that, be sure to put that on the old formats and we can import this. Okay, one STL. Uh, for this one, uh, I usually use the keep original. Selected. Uh, the up orientation is Z, so the project is going to be sit down on the canvas and I hit on the import. It's going to import our project. We can use uh, three camera movements in Keyshot tumble, pan, and dolly. Uh, for the pan, it's really easy. Just select pan and move your project with the tumble because I'm recording the video it's a little bit slower here. But for your project, it's going to be easier, so you can see that. And for the dolly, you can just zoom in and zoom out, right? Uh, let's go for the file and import the next part, which is the 2STL. And you can say keep original, Z, import. And uh, you can see that these are imported. If we click on the 2 on the I, uh, here you can see that we can turn it off or on. That's how we can do that. Uh, if we want to give the material, you can see there is a complete material section here that you can select. It's really cool. 
uh, for example, I can go to the paint and select the paint to give it to the windows. So let's just turn the frame off, turn the windows on, and give it a yellowish color, for example, or we can give it a black. A black can be a good one on this one. Uh, let's turn on the frames. And if you want to, maybe we want to give that uh, wood. You can see that we have lots of woods here. We can give that to the frames. That's it. Or we can give it like a metal with reflection. Uh, you can see that there are lots of materials you can use. Uh, the infrared is really cool. It's going to give you different colors as you rotate your project. Really great if you want to use different colors. Uh, another trick I have found is that you can give this rainbow. It's also similar to that and produce different colors. Uh, if you want to use the tune, the tune is also a great tool to give it a flat colorish on your project. And if you want to give it like a, a trans, uh, translucent one, uh, you can transparent one, you can just give that to the frames or the windows and produce something that, like that. Okay, let's move our project. If you want to move your geometry, you can simply just select the part you want and go to the move tool here. And you can see that I can move it in the XYZ direction. That is because translation is on, rotation and scale, you can turn anything on. And then you can just move that up and you can see that it's, okay, let's just dismiss this. But you can also select both of them and bring it a little bit up to give it a, some shadows. Okay, just hit, okay. And then we can go to the lighting, increase some shadow quality. Uh, put you can choose between different uh, different lighting presets. So for example, performance mode, basic, product, interior, and jewelry. Okay, you can select between these things: uh, ground illumination, self shadows, ray bounces. Increase that. And now what we want to do here is to get some output. Let me just give a color to this frame so we can get better results maybe. Doesn't really matter, let's just go with yellow. Okay, uh, and rotate this view, zoom in and zoom out with the scroll of the uh, mouse. You can just see that we can have this and bring it a little bit on the center of the project. And now we can just hit the render here. Uh, this is going to be the output. You can change the resolution if you want to. I'm going to just uh, hit here at the render. And just make this maximized. It's going to render our project. So it's going to just uh, do the rendering. You can see it's running here. Okay, and at the end, I can even at the uh, rendering process, you can save the image to the file. That's how you can do it. Okay, that's how we can also get an output, and uh, we use this technique to produce our uh, covers for our uh, videos and tutorials. Hope that this one was helpful and useful for you. Remember to subscribe and like our videos so uh, YouTube will show you more and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.